Good evening, everyone. Um, this is Attorney Amihan April M. Alcazar, your host for the Career Assistance Program here on the Education Channel, airing every Tuesdays from 8 to 9 in the evening. So it is my pleasure indeed to welcome our guest for tonight, who is joining us today, Dr. John Mercado. So can you give some greetings to our audience, please? Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me here. Thank you for also for inviting site to be one of the resource person for your career um, program. Uh, to our listeners, we hope we could give you some insights on our diploma programs in diploma engineering technology. With that, thank again, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Mercado. So I think we'd really like to start from the beginning as you are the founder of a site or CITE. Maybe you can give us a little bit of your history on how you established your technical vocational institution and where are you right now in your journey for your institution? Okay, thank you, ma'am, for this opportunity. So basically, site meaning Center for Industrial Technology and Enterprise, Mm -hmm. or site technical institute incorporated you can yeah. also browse us in the site.edu.ph mm -hmm. so it's an industry-based and socially oriented uh, institution which plays a relevant role in the economic and social development of Cebu mm -hmm. the central Visayas and the surrounding areas yes yeah. so again site provides top quality technical training to persons belonging to the lower stratum income of the society by means of scholarship programs. Yes. It provides also technical training or retraining and management upgrading courses for industry workers. Mm -hmm. And we also provide um, values formation training which nurtures human virtues and values in its, of course, our students, our clients, and of course, the staffers. Mm -hmm. So our, our project proponents of site are very well established institutions in the field of education and training. So, namely, uh, the Assisione Centro Ilis of Italy, yes. in Italy, the Miralco Foundation Incorporated Foundation Incorporated uh, in yes. Pasig, Philippines, mm -hmm. and of course the University of Asia and the Pacific ENP Foundation Incorporated in Pasig as well, Philippines. Yes. So basically, the school was established in 1990. It's a non-stock, non-profit educational organization um, which registered in uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. So we began our first operation in 1991, offering the three-year post-secondary industrial education program. It wasn't the it wasn't in the diploma of engineering technology yet. It was in uh, yeah industrial technician program. Mm -hmm. um, but but in 19 and but in 2017 we migrated into diploma in engineering technology mm -hmm. in a, uh, diploma programs in mechanical engineering technology diploma programs program in electronics engineering technology diploma program in electrical engineering technology diploma program in computer engineering technology okay. uh, so that, that program yeah mm -hmm. sorry that yeah. program is based on the philippine qualification qualifications framework uh, pqf level 5 descriptor and we were granted that uh, certificate of program registration to offer a three-year diploma program uh, technology, diploma program in engineering technology. So basically, CITAS, of course, when we started, requested the prelature of um, Opus Day to provide priests to take care of our spiritual activities of our institutions to our students and, of course, to the staff. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, basically our vision is for site is to be an educational institution that provides technical training to the less privileged youth in a manner uh, that is deeply rooted in moral, work values, of course strongly linked with families and industry, and of course extensively imbued with the entrepreneurial spirit. So that's our our vision. But our mission here, of course, site is an institution, and we are committed to provide technical training and technical skills and entrepreneurship, knowledge permission, health and social services, of course, to the less privileged youth. Of course, we also cater their families, the local community, and the industrial sector uh, of Visayas and Binanao. 
basically so can we, we, yeah, we get yeah. back to a little bit sir to 2017 because you mentioned that it's only fairly recently that you started to offer this this diploma program so as a technical vocational institutions because uh, our viewers there are also many who are involved in technical vocational um, administration can you um tell us the process by which um you were given accreditation for your diploma programs okay thank you very much ma'am uh, basically, SAIT has been offering diploma programs, but we started with the industrial nutrition program back then yes. in 1991 as our flagship program. Mm -hmm. So we offered uh, mechanical industrial nutrition program, electronics nutrition uh, uh, program, electrical nutrition program, and computer nutrition program. So it's easy for us to migrate from that three-year program, industrial nutrition program, flagship program, before to that of uh, diploma in engineering technology based on yeah. the Sydney Accord and the Green Accord back then in 2017 mm -hmm. because of the PQF. So, uh, go we, as we go back to our question is that how did we go about it in yes. compliance with the PQF Level 5? Of course, yeah. we started with the, based on our experience, because we are the, the what's this, a pilot implementer of this right. program. Uh, we started with the industry consultation. Of course, yes. we look at the labor market information to determine the demand in, the res in our locality. Mm -hmm. Meaning, we talk first with the our, our with the industries. Yes. Whether, uh, of course, we educate them as, as well on the PKF level five because that level mm -hmm. five is based on the Sydney Accord yes. and that particular sector. So from there on, as we consulted with with our industry partners. We determine competencies that are required in the respective partners of ours. We registered to TESDA in the Unified Tibet Program Registration Accreditation System. Mm -hmm. Then as we registered to that program, of course, prior to that registration, there was no TESDA order yet. Yes, uh, no training regulations. Yeah, yeah. And from there on, since there was a training regulation um, published in uh, 2017 of October, we aligned because we started it in, uh, ahead of the publication because we are again a pilot implementer. We aligned into that. And recently, we aligned into the test the order number 150 series of 2020 in the Dublin and Sydney Accord, PKF 4 and PKF 5. So, with that, it's not easy, you know, as we started with this program, we experienced a lot of birth pains. No? <laughs> as we developed the curriculum, because uh, the PhD at that time, yes. meaning uh, program standard guidelines of CHED, yes. uh, are also in the position to come up with their own standard because we want also our programs aligned to the Washington Accord or to the, oh. uh, to the bachelor's degree. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that uh, curriculum development, we work together with our uh, HAI's partner yeah. mm -hmm. and we sign a memorandum of, under of understanding so that our subjects in the professional in engineering technology and that of the, the general education mm -hmm. uh, are aligned already to the requirements of PhD and also mm -hmm. to the professional education. I see. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means with your partner organization or institution that you've mentioned, like the University of Asia and the Pacific, does it mean that they have recognized the programs that you have or the subjects? Uh, we, we align our curriculum to our local partners uh, in Central Visayas or in Cebu in particular. Mm -hmm. yeah, like uh, University of Cebu. Ah, okay. uh, yeah, we also partner with University of San Carlos. Mm -hmm. We also partner with the University of San Jose Recoletos and uh, Cebu Institute of Technology and University. So we partner so with means, them. Yeah. yeah. So that means um, they are actually, um, with your program, with the diploma course, you are both accredited with the TESDA as a diploma under the TESDA. And then also the subjects that you have um, given in your diploma course is also recognized by the um, your partner uh, universities for the bachelor's degree that they are recognized in the CHED, correct? That's, cor that's correct, attorney. 
Yes. So it's um, very, very innovative um, on your end, right? But as you've mentioned, very challenging. So what recommendation can you give now to our technical vocational institutions if they would like to develop a similar program that the one, like the ones that you have established? Of course, uh, what I would like to recommend, of course, you start first with the industry consultation because at the end of yes. the day, the recipient of our graduates are the most important thing. Yes, that's why, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why our curriculum is also uh, in line with the industry demand, which is also into the dual training system program under Republic Act seventy six eighty six. So we in the design of this curriculum is of course one and a half years in school and one and a half years in plant. Well, while in the while they are in the implant training, they report back in school once a week. No, mm -hmm. So with that modality, that would also give uh, due consideration no, to, to our industry partners. So what I would recommend, of course, again, as I mentioned earlier, you talk with your local industry partners, mm -hmm. prospective industry partners, to make your curriculum relevant. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you also partner with HEIs if you don't have, if you are not in the same university, yes. if you don't have so that uh, our graduates would be able also to to pursue their careers after the diploma program if they wish to pursue because we all believe in lifelong learning so we yeah. uh, we adhere to that uh, that's why we <laughs> we align all those uh, programs both in a professional um, general education electives among others are already aligned into that directions and that we comply to the Ladi Rice program as well, uh, based on the, uh, uh, what's this? Ladi Rice program issuances. Yes. Okay. So now that we've discussed about the part from the technical vocational institutions, how about now for the students? What kind of opportunities should they consider when they were talking about technical vocational education? This will be that of higher education because you've mentioned about the different possibilities that they can take insofar as like lifelong learning is concerned, sir. Yeah, uh, the diploma program, the diploma program in engineering technology is the first of its kind in our country. No? Mm -hmm. Offering this would help, uh, it is, I mean, this offers a new pathway yes. for aspiring technologists, entrepreneurs, and those seeking for future careers in, in engineering. Yes. So with the diploma program, uh, the graduates would be equipped with the, of course, specialized skills or special skills, which are highly valued by industry partners. Uh, its specification includes, of course, in computer engineering technology, mechanical engineering technology, electronics engineering technology, and diploma engineering technology. And with that, they would be hired because of of course, our modality into the dual training system program. Mm -hmm. So, meaning prior to to the crafting of the curriculum, the, the industry partners are already part of it. And now uh, we are happy to note, since they are part of it, they would really understand the nature, the kind of curriculum we have. Once our students uh, uh, graduate from the from the program, so in terms of career opportunity, opportunity based on our experience. Of course, ninety-five percent, and uh, prior to graduation, and uh, of course, a month or two months um, after the graduation, all of them are already absorbed to the companies or being hired because of its relevance to the demand. So, meaning we are using the tailored for curriculum, no? meaning, uh, <laughs> parang we use it into we are doing the enterprising the curriculum. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there's a seamless transition between the education to the employment in the industry. So what kind of opportunities are available, sir, for scholarships or financial assistance for our students so that they could partake of this diploma course? Yeah, prior to partake in a diploma course, of course, we accept. First is that requirements. What are those requirements? Of course, those graduates in grade 12. It must be a grade 12 graduate. Yes. Or we also cater college uh, undergrad or college level. I mean, those who are not able to finish their college degree. And of course, our spasers. We consider that, but they will also undergo bridge program. So, okay. um, 
the passwords. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, we should have good subjects in uh, math, physics, and in, of course, in in English. English. But uh, we also, in our end, inside in particular, we we accept any tracks of uh, grade 12 graduates. Like if, whether they are graduate in STEM, though they are into engineering, graduate in tech book, uh, graduate in UMS or graduate in um, in uh, what's the other one? Air Force Truck. <laughs> I forgot. EBM. EBM. Uh, accountants, EB business, and uh, yeah, we market. accept all of them. However, those who are not in the STEM should undergo bridging program. Of course, they will have their uh, calculus, pre-calculus, uh, pre uh, the basic mathematics to prepare them to the mainstream. Yes. Uh, uh yeah. So, what do you foresee will be the future for technical education um, in the Philippines? Considering that right now we have the unified financial assistance for tertiary education, and that also covers um, the scholarships and financial assistance that are available for students so that they could partake of technical education. Uh, that's a very good question. We Thank know you, for sir. the fact, yeah, we know for the fact that we are in the emerging markets. The yes. Philippines is the emerging markets. Mm -hmm. The backbone of our industry is in tech book. Yes. So, with that, it's good that right now that uh, our government is giving uh, considerations to tech book to provide scholarship because whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. our, for our country to survive in these trying times is also to develop uh, skilled workers. Not just skilled workers, but also the middle-level workers. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's good also to develop with uh, good engineers, but we are not yet in the research and development country. Yes. Looking forward someday that we are one of those who will produce products, not just by us right now, we are just in the assembly part. Mm -hmm. So, going into that, it's um, it, it gives a, a, I mean, it motivates to the young ones, the young individuals to enroll in the tech book because that would also help them in their financial needs. Like uh, in our case, since some of our students are UAQT scholars or UAQT as they say, uh, they receive 160 pesos uh, per day. And then aside from that, they receive um, 500 pesos for their PPE. Uh, personal protective equipment they receive 500 pesos in a semester um, uh, internet allowance plus 5,000 pesos for their book allowance mm -hmm. so that's the benefits for, uh, yeah those uh, that's the benefits for students who will uh, undertake in the tech book in the diploma program yeah I'm not uh, so in in the, of motivation sorry. you like so so, sir, what kind of encouragement would you give to our students to consider technical education as a viable pathway for their career in the future? Yeah, it is a very good question. Uh, it's considered as a viable pathway to, to the landscape in our career because, you know, um, if you look at the, the pyramid of the human uh, resource requirements, if you try to look at the, the big chunk of the demand is in the skilled and the middle level. Mm -hmm. And then it's good also to note that as you understand the basic principles of technical know-how, you would also be able to perform well in your technical training or practical mm -hmm. training. So because in the middle level training, like a, a diploma programs, you have almost 50-50. 50 percent theoretical and 50 percent practical. practical as compared to that of bachelor's degree you only have 20 percent practical and 80 percent theoretical yes. comparing also to the skilled workers you only have 20 percent theoretical and 50 percent uh 20 percent uh theoretical 80 percent practical yes. but in the case of uh middle level worker of course you have 50 50. in our case it's almost 50 50. So one and a half years in school, one and a half years in front, or 60-40 for that matter. 
So it's a very viable thing because you would be able to understand the way your managers think because you also have some management subjects embedded into that. And you would also be able to understand the, the technical know-how because in the diploma program, there are also embedded uh, resultants, meaning those are with training regulations. Yes. Yeah. Like in the case of computer engineering, you put in there that to the animation, the, the computer uh, service servicing in situ, among others. Like in the case also of um, pro diploma program in engineering technology, a diploma program in electrical engineering technology, we, we, we also embedded the uh, EIM, no? Instrument, uh, electrical uh, Instal Installation Maintenance, EIM in situ or in situ 3. We also embedded mechatronics in situ, embedding. So meaning the advantage of tech book, tech book is that you have the know-how in terms of theoretical and you also have know-how in terms of the practical. Practical, yes. yes. Um, what can you also say to our prospective students sir, about the possible opportunities that they may have with their diploma courses in other countries and how is it recognized? Because you mentioned several accords. Um, that we are actually complying with with these diploma courses. Yeah, the the advantage of taking into the diploma program is that um, our curriculum is already aligned to the international standards. Uh, pursuant to test the order number fifty series one fifty series of twenty twenty, uh, which we only align. Though prior to that, we also align pursuant to test the order number 38 series of 2017 so that that curriculum is realigned that that program learning outcomes as we call that yes are already aligned to the international standard uh, based on pqf level 4 and pqf level 5 uh, level of descriptors so the graduates of ours uh, may no longer retake no the same subjects or competencies into other countries if you wish to and uh, we have a good experience to that because our the graduates of ours are being recognized abroad mm -hmm. uh, that's, very good. that's uh that's a very clear understanding now that our country is already aligned into the national international standards based on those accords mm -hmm. uh, like in the case also of uh, computer engineering technology we align into the sole accord Mm -hmm. for for IT. Yes. Um, so so the career opportunities of, for them is very um, is very what we call this um, promising because here in our country if you work locally we have a lot of manufacturing engineering production engineering we have maintenance quality control design and technical supervision. So we all and we also have software development uh, companies like in the case of Cebu, since we known to be an IT hub, so we have a lot of uh, IT uh, ICT companies here. But uh, again, Cebu is known also for manufacturing because of the you know in the Mactan Economic Processing Zone we have Mac one two three, yes. and we also have the the Economic Zone in Balamban for the for Tunisia in particular. So. This, uh, this would give them better opportunity because of the presence of the industry. So that's why I would really recommend that uh, as they develop uh, programs in the, diplo in, in the dipl in, uh, diploma programs, they should uh, talk first with their industry uh, players in that locality. Yes. Um, part of our segment also are our um, interviews with our policymakers or from the government. So what is your uh, perspective or viewpoint with respect to some policies which may encourage um, technical vocational institutions to partake of diploma? And what kind of um, directives or guidelines would you like the government to actually implement as policies for the future to, in order to provide more incentives to the technical vocational sector? First is that uh, it is good to adhere to the standards, yes. but we should also give uh, an elbow room for development because mm -hmm. there is no such perfect system because we are still in new fight in this particular undertaking. Exactly. Emerging. Yeah. So we should be developmental. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, if I may okay. say, we can bend the rules, but we should not break the rules. Yes. <laughs> So, looking at that perspective, is that uh, give some flexibility? Uh, give some fl- flexibility. This would encourage other institutions to really implement the programs, because what hinders for them to implement such particular program because of the very tedious process. Yes. First, you must have NTTC holders, so it's not easy to develop trainers for tech book. Uh, meaning the NTTC holders, this would uh, of course they should have NC. Plus, uh, they should undergo rigid training in uh, AM and PM, assessment methodology and training methodology. And they, use, they should develop curriculum. So that's National Technical Training Certificate holders. And then, aside from that, um, the curriculum should not be should not be exclusive. So it has to be shared. So yes. that others could also to benchmark, however, benefit. yeah, benefit, and at the same time, uh, do we know for the fact that each region has its own peculiarities in terms of demand? Yes. So that's why it has to be more flexible, because um, we say for example, diploma program in mechanical engineering technology in Cebu may not be the same diploma program in mechanical engineering technology in Guinea. In the case of Region 7, the mechanical engineering technology program there perhaps could be more on welding because of the nature of their industry. But yes. here in Cebu, yeah. yeah, here in Cebu, our mechanical engineering technology or diploma in, uh, in mechanical engineering technology be geared towards on the, the machining mm-hmm. and, uh, and other related manufacturing uh, technologies. So that's why dual training system is very important in the implementation of the diploma program because that would give flexibility in terms of its relevance of our graduates to that of the industry requirements. Yes. So as a last um, question, sir, so we know that uh, the model for the technical vocational that you've mentioned, the dual technology, which is really like a German model. So do you foresee yes. that we may approximate the dual technology system eventually in the Philippines and it can be adopted? Yes, because um, of course we visited several companies in Germany to really understand the being of its program modality. Yes. So from there on, we see, we see the, the mechanism the systems on how they go about it. So the way we look at it towards the development of our workers, we should do dual training system program. And that would give better employment opportunities mm-hmm. to our graduates. And at the same time, we would be able to be at par to that of industry standards because there are some technology that we presently have are no longer being relevant to the technology of our industry partners yes so what we have yeah absolutely what we have is just the basic or the fundamental knowledge the advanced skills and the advanced knowledge should be delivered in our industry partners and uh, with that that's also part of the commitment of our industry to participate in human capital development Mm -hmm. they shouldn't be we just only uh, receive without participating in the training. That would encourage them. So that's why the way I look at it, dual training system program is a way for us to have a better economy in our nation building. Yes. So um, with that, sir, so maybe you can give your parting words um, to encourage, firstly, our technical vocational institutions um, to consider um, offering these diploma programs then to our students in order for them to consider technical education um, as a viable career pathway. And lastly, of course, our policymakers in the government to provide um, guidelines and incentives to the technical education sector, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Attorney. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to invite uh, TVI owners yes. uh, to participate in the diploma program uh, spearheaded by TESDA because you know for the fact that the fact that right now we are in the we are part of the emerging markets and the demand is into that middle level workers yes. uh, 
it's good to note that by participating in this program, we would be able to develop more middle-level manpower that would really be need of our industry. So I hope with the with the sharing, you'll be able to give uh, to to get some insights on how we address into the requirements of our industry and at the same time benefit to our scholars or our students. So I would encourage TVIs to participate in this program because this would help us to improve our economy at the same time uh, nation building. Secondly, I'd like to encourage the uh, scholars or the prospective students to enroll in this diploma program because this is part of the Lagerais program that we have been talking about. And uh, it's not a second-rate profession having a tech book uh, discipline, but it's really a, a high-paying jobs. And this would really give you morale, high morale because you can really work after your graduation or even before graduation. Uh, one way of of helping our ourselves to develop better self-esteem, of course, to have a better work. So given this framework, the diploma program, and then from there on, you work afterwards, then you will be able to have better contribution to our society. So with that, uh, for the policy uh, makers, uh, I hope you continue giving due incentives to the to, to the TVA owners and also to the students because one way of helping our TVIs is also to provide them incentives by by giving scholarships and we know for the fact that 85% uh, of our tech book institutions are coming from technical vocational institutions private technical vocational institutions 15% exactly. uh, is coming from you know in the TTIs technical training institutions or the public institutions. So it's good for policymakers to focus on the assessment mechanism and those programs that cannot be offered by the TVIs, uh, TVIs, my private TVIs. So with that, uh, those 85% TVIs would be able to improve their, their delivery in terms of advancing their technology and at the same time to uh, compete with the global standards. Yeah, global yeah. standards. Yeah, in the, in, the, in the international standards. And for us to make us more competitive because, again, as I made mention earlier, 85% of our TVIs are in, the uh, private. are in the private sectors. So the government should allocate uh, more uh, funds for TVIs and also for, for CHED to consider those graduates of TVIs to continue for those who pursue their degree programs to continue their allocation in terms of scholarship. Yes. So that uh, they will uh, partake into the TVIs, not just pursuing immediately to the bachelor's degree, but to go into the process. Mm -hmm. To go into the process. Definitely. From from tech work to, 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 to engineering degree. Yes. Or from engineering technology to engineering degree. So that was really such a, an enlightening, actually, very informative discussion that we had with Dr. John Mercado of Site Cebu City. So thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time and your insights that you've provided to us in the Career Assistance Program. So our goal in this program is to have a seamless transition from education to employment or business opportunities. Okay? Thank so, you so much for joining us tonight, and I'm looking forward to having everyone again join us next time here at the Education Channel. So thank you so much for your participation and stay safe and healthy everyone and good evening.